Easton Jones. A solo shot puts the Cougs on top. One nothing. Bottom one. Back to the track. It's gone. Home run. 426 feet and 104 miles per hour off the barrel. We are live at Studio B. This is your day-to-day -day BYU Sports play-by-play. -play. I am Spencer Linton alongside Jason Shepard. Joining us now is, in large part, the best, most prolific offensive player on this BYU baseball team. And I say that because he's number one in home runs with 11, number one in hits, number one in runs scored, number one in total bases, number one in slugging percentage. Easton Jones, ladies and gentlemen, what else have you done, Easton, besides no. all Will you, will you pick it up a little bit for crying out loud? <laughs> How would you explain this season for you uh, with BYU baseball from an individual standpoint? Yeah, it's been fun. Um, just with all the new coaches and stuff that we have, it's really, it's, I look forward to coming to the field every day now and um, just getting after it with all the guys. So, How would you describe this year so far? Everything was going into the year, all the talk was going into a brand new league and it's Big 12 baseball. You know, now that you've, you know, more than halfway through the season, what, what has this year been like personally and for the team? Yeah, I mean, the Big 12, it's, it's a different animal than what we were in before. It kind of felt like in um, the WCC, it was pretty, what we were getting from all the teams was pretty similar. And um, now with the Big 12, every team we play is just a powerhouse. So it's been fun. It's been a good adjustment. And um, we got a lot of young guys on the team. And we're just now getting experience in this bigger conference. So it's, we'll, we'll, be, we'll be fine. What's been the biggest difference in the skill sets that you see generally speaking, from Big 12 players compared to what you saw in the West Coast Conference? Um, the biggest change has just been the arms, like the everybody's bullpens and everybody's starters that we've seen. It feels like every guy's up there th throwing 95. And so um, just going off week to week, adjusting to that has been the biggest challenge. This clearly has not bothered you, Easton. <laughs> <laughs> 95 miles an hour does not bother you. The numbers tell me yeah. such. So how have you been able to handle the transition? Uh, I mean, I think what Coach Coolball does with this hitters is it's helped a ton. We're facing, um, he sets up those machines down in the cages and they're just throwing wicked stuff at us. And so um, everything that we're seeing from the arms, I feel like we already see down in the cage. And he tries to make it as game-like as possible. And I think it's helped me a lot and it's helped our hitters. So. Well, let, let's, let's stay on that track. And Spencer was going over the numbers. Let's talk about your power numbers. Last year, three home runs. This year, you lead the team with 11. You lead the Big 12 Conference with home runs in the Big 12 with nine in conference play. What do you attribute your power numbers jumping up like they have? Um, I think just over the summer, I've matured a little bit more. Um, last year, I feel like I was still a baby compared to all those guys out there. And so um, I went up and played in that summer baseball league up in Canada and something kind of clicked for me and I just um, feel like once I came back I just started hitting the ball all over the place so talk to me about the summer league baseball because obviously guys have done that for years and a lot of BYU players have participated in different leagues throughout you know the last couple of decades why is that so important for you guys that get the opportunity to do that to go play there uh, the biggest thing for like the position players is just going out there and getting more at bats because I mean, I went up there and I got 250 at bats. And so I came back in the fall and I just felt like I was prepared and ready. What is the team goal at this point? Because it is an uphill climb. And I know you've had some struggles in Big 12 play at home in the last two series. There are still games to be played, however. So what, what is your realistic team goal for the remainder of the season? Our biggest thing is we want to make the conference tournament, of course. And we still feel like we can do that. And... Um, we feel like our best baseball is still in front of us and it feels like whenever school kind of gets out is when we kind of start getting hot just because we're worrying about less stuff and mm. so um, we're going to we're going to make a push here at the end to try to get into the tournament so how a team handles adversity usually will you know kind of decide how the rest of the season goes how, how do you feel like the team has handled the record not being what I know you guys would like it to be yeah I mean our games they feel closer than like what the scores are saying. I mean, um, we make a few mistakes in the game that kind of have cost us lately, but um, we feel like we can hang with all these teams still. And, um, yeah. Easton Jones is with us on BYU Sports Nation, the top hitter for the Cougars. And uh, let's go ahead and add some more fun numbers, shall we? You hold the longest hitting streak on the team this season at 12 games. 
And you've played some nice defense, only one error this season. So that maybe that's a little bit overshadowed, but what have you done specifically to work on your defensive game? And how can that maybe translate over to helping some of your other teammates avoid those critical, those terminal errors that have hurt you in the recent past? Yeah, um, Adam Law has been huge with us infielders. Um, he comes out every day with a ton of energy and he wants us to get better and he loves working with all of us. And um, every time we go out there, just hitting like five different kinds of balls at us. He's hitting lacrosse balls, softballs, um, squishy balls, all at us to just get different feels. And it's not fun when you're doing it because <laughs> it's hard. But it's made all of us better infielders. So. One of the things that you know I, people may or may not be aware with this team is just how young you guys are. And, and not just age, but in terms of production, th this team lost so much production off of last year's team. Last year, you were the freshman. Mm -hmm. Now you got another group of really talented freshmen and you know, first time players that are coming here, maybe transferring from other schools. W what have you made of the talent, that the young talent that has come into the program? Yeah, I mean, we're, it's hard for us right now because all these guys have so much experience, like all these big 12 schools that we're playing. And so um, for us and with our young, young lineup, with like guys like Deming and um, Gamble, all those guys leaving last year, it was, it was a little bit of a question mark just because none of us have had all the experience in this big conference. And so um, just with those young guys going to um, summer ball and getting all those at bats is going to be big time for them. Easton Jones, BYU Baseball is on BYU Sports Nation. You turn your attention out of conference tomorrow to another heated rivalry game with the University of Utah. What does that game mean to you and your team, given that it isn't a Big 12 game yet, it will be mm -hmm. next year, but still an out-of-conference situation? Yeah, we always love beating Utah. So um, we were able to go up there last time and beat them. And um, they're playing good baseball this year, but um, coming into our park, uh, we don't you lose at home normally, and so we'll get them. What is you mean? You're you're a local kid. You're Utah County kid. What what does that rivalry mean to you? BYU versus Utah, especially because I'm, I'm assuming that there are a lot of players on Utah that you grew up playing with, whether it be high school, whatever the case may be. As a local kid, what does this rivalry mean to you? Yeah, I got a couple high school teammates that are up there playing at Utah, and so it's good to always see them. But um, you know. We have, we got to beat Utah. <laughs> we have to. Amen. Yeah, we Amen. Have to. It's pretty simple yeah. and straightforward. Yep. To quote Easton, we got to beat Utah. Yeah. Okay, that that it is what it is. <laughs> okay, I ask every baseball guest we have, uh, almost like a tradition here for me, at least on this show, about superstitions because there are so many superstitions tied into the sport. Where do you fall on the spectrum? Like, are, do you have superstitions, and if so, what are they? Uh, in high school, I kind of, me and my buddies were super. Like if we did something one day and we won, we'd have to do it the next day. But I've kind of let that go now that I've got to college. But um, the biggest thing that I think that we look forward to, my kind of group of guys, is the early hitting on the game days on the field. We love going out there and blasting the music and hitting bombs and BP. What's your playlist? Like, what is your playlist like? Well, I live with the Hawaiian kids, so I listen to a lot of reggae. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. All right. That's what it is. Yep. I've listened to a lot of reggae just because of him now. Let's so. go. Listen to reggae. Beat Utah. There we go. I like <laughs> okay. it. we got to beat Utah. Let's yeah. give you some BYU Sports Nation karma for the game tomorrow. Good yes, luck sir. against the Utes. Thank you. Thanks,